Good day everyone and welcome to our CHI 2023 talk. This is Omar Namnakani from the University of Glasgow. On behalf of myself and co-authors from universities in Scotland, Germany and Portugal, I'm thrilled to present our paper comparing dual time pursuits and gaze gestures for gaze interaction on handheld mobile devices. Gaze-based interaction has long been studied by HCI researchers and prior work classified gaze-based interaction into implicit gaze-based interaction in which the interface adapts to the user's passive gaze behavior often used in attentive user interfaces and in security applications and explicit gaze-based interaction where users move their eyes to provide direct input and there are many techniques proposed in the literature for such interaction such as dual time and pursuits more about them later it's worth mentioning that the integration of front-facing cameras in mobile devices and their improved processing powers and camera resolutions are actually transforming mobile eye tracking. So in this work, we focus on explicit gaze-based interaction on unmodified handheld mobile devices and provide an empirical evaluation of how gaze-based techniques perform in mobile setting. Most studies on gaze interaction were deployed in controlled and static setups, such as on interactive surfaces, desktop machines, public displays, and mobile devices held by a mount. While there are some work that considered eye tracking in mobile settings, for example, screen glint considered different postures by having the participant sitting by a table, sitting on a chair, walking, etc. But these works were not about explicit gaze interaction. Some studies also explored gaze interaction on wearables and head mounting displays, but these settings are very different from those for daily gaze interaction on handheld mobile devices. So we can conclude that results from prior studies are not transferable to the context of handheld mobile devices, where users holding postures and the shaky environments play a big role in the quality of collected gaze data. So in this paper, we report on the results of the first user study to compare three widely used gaze interaction techniques, dual time, pursuits, and gaze gestures on smartphones while sitting and also while walking to select one of two, four, 9, 12, or 32 targets on the screen. So now I'll go through the interaction techniques used in the study and explain their concepts. First one is dwell time, which is a brief delay to differentiate between casual viewing and gaze input. One of the advantages of uh, dwell time is that it allows users to point and select in the same way as they would with a mouse or touch screen. However, one of the disadvantages of dual time is that it relies on calibration for accurate gaze estimation. So the calibration process must be carried out before using dual time to register estimated gaze direction with the target interaction space. The registration requires sampling of eye gaze at known points. And since dual time requires uh, users uh, to calibrate, the mobile nature makes it likely that calibration would break often, so users might need to recalibrate every now and then which might slow down the interaction. In dual time, selection is performed by fixating on a target for a period of time. And based on prior works and pilot tests, we adopted a dual time of 800 milliseconds. The second technique is pursuits, which relies on smooth pursuit eye movement, which are subconsciously performed when gazing at a moving target. Pursuits require the interface to be dynamic and it relies on relative eye movement, so no calibration is required. However, fatigues and confusions are some of the drawbacks of pursuits technique. The selections can be performed by matching the eye's trajectory with the relative trajectory of the objects of interest. We used Pearson's algorithm to detect correlation between moving stimuli and the eye's trajectory every one second, based on prior work. The target with the highest correlation that exceeds the threshold value will be considered the target to be selected. The last technique is gaze gestures, which is the eye movements that follow particular patterns in a sequential time order. Selection is achieved by performing the correct gesture with the eyes for memory, and gaze gestures relies on relative eye movements, so no calibration is required and does not require screen real estate as mostly performed for memory. However, gestures are difficult to recall as the number of gestures increase. In our implementation, a right or left gesture is performed to select the side that has the desired target. 
The targets will then be redistributed to allow the users to further narrow down their selection until the desired target is selected. So we conducted a within subjects experiment and recruited 24 participants. Three participants wore glasses during the experiment. We had two independent variables. The first one was the gaze interaction techniques. We covered three conditions, dwell time pursuits and gaze gestures. And the second one is the number of targets. We covered five different number of targets, two, four, nine, 12, and 32. We were interested in exploring the impact of the number of targets on the selection technique. An unmodified iPhone X with front-facing camera was used, and the study was split into two parts, a part for the walking state and another for the sitting state, where half of the participants started with the walking state followed by the sitting state, while the other half started with the sitting state and concluded with the walking state. Participants went through three blocks, one block per gaze interaction technique. Each participant performed 30 selections, and participants underwent a calibration phase before the dual time block, but not before the other two techniques. And markers were put on the floor to indicate how the participants should move in the walking state. Participants were free to hold the mobile devices the way they would do naturally. So now the results. We first measured selection time, defined as the time from the moment the target appeared until the moment the correct target was selected. The results show that regardless the number of targets, pursuits was the fastest overall. The results also show that regardless of the participant states during selection, pursuits was the fastest for four or more targets, followed by dual time. On the other hand, gaze gestures was the fastest when there were two targets to choose from followed by pursuits in the setting state and followed by dwell time in the walking states. In terms of selection time, significant differences were found between all the techniques in the setting state, while in the walking state, significant differences were found between gaze gestures and both dwell time and pursuits. Second, we measured error counts, defined as the number of attempts before a successful selection, as erroneous selections were not accepted and did not cause the trials to end. The results show that participants made more errors in the walking state compared to the sitting state. On the other hand, gaze gestures performed well in both states and regardless of the number of targets, as it produced fewer input errors. Significant differences in error counts were found between dual time and gaze gestures and also between pursuits and gaze gestures in both the sitting and walking states. We also measured the percentage of time out and the cognitive workload. We also collected qualitative feedbacks where participants responded to Likert scale questions and open-ended questions to reflect on the different input techniques. We also asked the participants to rank their preference for the input techniques. More details can be found in the paper. So when comparing our implementation of the three commonly used case-based interaction selection methods, we found that while setting input using pursuits is significantly faster compared to dwell time and gaze gestures, and while gaze input is generally slower while walking, it's significantly slower when using gaze gestures compared to the other two techniques, and input using gaze gestures is significantly more accurate than both other methods in both states, and users prefer pursuit when stationary but prefer dwell time when walking. Based on our results, we have few recommendations. Use pursuits if users are expected to use the phone while stationary and there are few targets, nine or less. Gaze gestures is also suitable when there are few targets, such as two targets. However, it requires a longer learning curve. Dual time should be used when there are more than nine targets and while stationary and also while on the go. While pursuits perform well in terms of selection, selection time, it's demanding and distracting when there are many targets. Use gaze gestures when accuracy is more important than speed in both sitting and walking states, and allow users to opt for alternative techniques depending on the context and the number of targets. Thank you for watching and please do scan the QR code for more details about the paper.